Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So when Dave Mustaine signed with Gibson in 2021, it was a massive event. Mustaine signatures were promised across all of Gibson's brands, Custom Shop, USA, Epiphone, and Kramer. And it's been a wait, but today Gibson finally delivered on that promise. More accessible Epiphone and Kramer Dave Mustaine import models. Let's take a closer look. So of course, for a while, we've been introduced to Mustaine Signature EXP shape, basically a 25 and a half inch scale flying V with an Explorer headstock, the Signature two volume, one tone hockey stick layout in the $2,800 production USA and $7,000 limited custom shop runs. There's also been a custom shop acoustic, a songwriter, I think. I'm not as familiar with Gibson's acoustics. That was $4,500. Very expensive. The edgy inlays look kind of weird on an acoustic, but it does have an ebony board and 24 frets, which I don't think Gibson has ever done on a non-electric before. And there's a Mustaine Les Paul all but confirmed, and we'll talk a little bit about that and the future of the collection later. But do you see the theme here? Even given the insane inflation of guitar prices, which we will definitely come back to because that's a significant side theme in all this. But up until now, you've had to shell out thousands of dollars to enjoy anything Mustaine related from Gibson. And that's why we've been dying to get our hands on especially some Epiphone Mustaine models. And even with some leaks, there were still questions about what they would do to distinguish the Epis from the import Kramers. Well, today they dropped the import portion of the collection and we have at least some of the answers. From Kramer, a Vanguard in three iterations corresponding to the previously released USA models. There's Ebony, there's Silver Metallic, and there's a limited Rust in Peace version, complete with a green headstock logo, I love that. Mahogany body, mahogany neck with a medium C profile, Ebony fingerboard, Grover tuning machines, Dave Mustaine silhouette on the back of the headstock, 25 inch scale length, and his signature Seymour Duncan Thrash Factor set, which is essentially a modified JB59 where the bridge is modeled directly after the one used to track rust in peace. These are the exact same pickups in his higher end models. Always love when they do that. That way you're getting at least theoretically the same sound in the imports. Also love that the pointier shape makes these look more like his Jackson's, especially since they're V string through instead of a stop tail. That's such an iconic Dave Mustaine look and it looks more Megadeth correct to me than even his Gibson EXPs. The guy is a signature look. No matter what company he goes with, he has a bad habit of making basically the exact same guitar. Speaking of which, today's sponsor. Now, you know how everyone has those bad habits they've been trying to break forever. Maybe you've tried a couple of things and it just keeps coming back. Breaking a bad habit outright is hard. So wouldn't it be great if you could start by just taking the bad out of the bad habit. Well, that's exactly the philosophy behind the innovative award-nominated device, Fume. So Fume is an air diffuser. No electronics, no vapor, no harmful chemicals, just all natural flavored air. Replacing your harmful habit with an innocuous and surprisingly fresh tasting one. So if you're ready to see why over 100,000 people have used Fume to break up with their destructive habits in a fun, all natural way, Heading over to tryfume.com slash agafish and use my code agafish to get 10% off. That's tryfum.com code agafish. You can also scan the QR code in the corner of your screen. And of course, clicking help support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're checking that out, let's get back to the video. Which brings us over to the Epiphones. They maintain the EXP shape, but interestingly, one is a Flying V Custom and the other is a Flying V Prophecy. Now, the reason they're not called EXPs seems to be that they don't have the EXP scale length. They have the classic Gibson 24 and 3 quarter inches. And oh my God, that's so disappointing. Yeah, the unique shape was interesting, but the longer scale length was one of the strongest spec playability features that made the EXP more than just a Flying V with a quirky headstock. Anyway, so the custom comes in black sparkle, bound body, bound headstock. Most of the specs are the same as the Kramer V plate string through, mahogany body, 24 jumbo fret, ebony fingerboard, Grover tuners, loaded with the thrash factor set. Not quite sure what the neck profile is on this. It's listed as artist profile, which is super helpful. I'm gonna guess it's Epiphone's D-shaped slim taper. It's cool, it's got a volute. The Prophecy definitely does have a D profile, and again, a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. And it just seems like a very bizarre addition to the collection. It's way more 
prophecy than it is Dave Mustaine. It's got brush chrome hardware, locking Grover tuners, Fishman Fluence pickups, all the staples of the Prophecy collection and not things that it shares with the rest of Dave Mustaine's guitars. Though I think all of them should come with locking tuners. But it's not even really got an exclusive color. It's basically the red tiger color from the Les Paul slapped onto this guitar. It seems more like this color just so happened to be available for the V, like if the Prophecy Flying V already came in Red Tiger, I'm sure they would have just moved on to the next one. They could have at least done it in green, you know, that would have made more sense. Just like with Jerry Cantrell's Prophecy, I think it's an objectively cool addition to the Prophecy lineup, but it's just weird vibes to slap an artist's name on a guitar that isn't really their style and they almost definitely will not use regularly and it just sucks for the consumer that such a high artist tax has been added to the price in the process. I mean, it's almost double the regular Prophecy V, and we do have to talk a little bit more about that. The price. $12.99 for the Kramers, $13.99 for the Epi Custom, and $14.99 for the Prophecy. Even with a custom molded hard case, that is a lot. Remember, just like 18 months, 24 months ago, we were talking about how crazy it would be to see any thousand dollar Epiphone, and that's because we were talking about a Matt Hafey Les Paul loaded with an Evertune. But now every signature Gibson import is over a thousand bucks, just expect it. All this is starting to make the 899 Prophecy Flying V look like a better and better deal now that even LTDs and Schecters have been creeping up in price as well. Like, there are a lot of people that are gonna look at the price and immediately think Gibson's being greedy, and there is that artist tax, obviously, but especially with the included hard cases, the Kramers aren't actually that outrageously priced relative to today's market. Guitars are just fucking expensive now, and it's a real shame for fans of Megadeth who have been waiting for a truly affordable Mustang guitar. And it seems at this point, if one does eventually come along, it's gonna have some very steep spec compromises. At least with these, they're specced to what he actually plays. I also really dislike artificial product differentiation in general, and it's kind of really shitty for the Megadeth fans that you have to step up to the Gibson USA level before you get the Dean Wing inlays. There's no cost reason for that. It's just Gibson going, you need to drop the $2,500 to get the real deal. On the other hand, a lot of people find those inlays really ugly and dots are inoffensive, so it's kinda cool if you want a workhorse metal guitar with the exclusive specs, like the hockey stick headstock or the full two octaves, without it screaming that it's Dave Mustaine's signature. But no 25 and a half inch scale length for the Epiphone? Dots versus wings, there's no playability difference. Scale length? Definitely a playability difference. And again, you can argue that some players prefer a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, but for the hardcore Megadeth fans who just wanted the EXP for less money, straight up, that's not what they made, and it is a bit of a poopy situation. So what's next for the Mustang collection? What does it mean for the future of Epiphone signatures? Well, we've got the all but confirmed Les Paul. Looks dope. I actually really, really want one especially if they're gonna do the 25 and a half inch scale length, which I'm sure they will on the Gibson. But I'm gonna guess if these Flying Vs sell well, they'll do the same thing on the Epiphone front and reskin a Les Paul Prophecy body, which means a 24 and three quarter inch scale length. And it sucks, but if not a lot of people care, then from a business perspective, being more efficient and reusing the same ingredients, it makes sense. There have been a couple of other leaks, a Kramer style explorer, Dave Mustaine seems to be really into gold top at the moment, so we'll have to wait and see, but don't be surprised to see a lot more of Dave Mustaine and Gibson news in the near future. So yeah, generally I'm a big Epiphone fan, this entire channel is basically built on Epiphone demos, not so into Kramers usually, but I have to say in this case, I think Kramer kind of nailed it, especially with the pointier V shape. They really suit the classic Dave Mustaine Megadeth image, that aesthetic. Jury's still out on the Epiphones, objectively cool guitars, but probably disappointing for fans who just wanted more accessible versions of the Gibsons he's been playing for the last couple of years. Anyways, I'm gonna stop repeating myself now. Those are my thoughts. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think 
of the Dave Mustaine import collection. Leave your thoughts down below and massive thanks to my patrons who make each and every video possible. Their names are up on the screen right now. Consider joining them if you want to support what I do. You can also join as a channel member or pick up some comfy merch. Social media, Discord, and affiliate links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.